Okay, sounds good. And then let's move to the technical part. Uh, a deep neural network for acoustic models uh, is uh, the today's other uh, topic. And actually, today's topic covers many things. Uh, first, uh, the, the, the basic approach of uh, the how to apply deep neural network for acoustic modeling. And then uh, I will also explain about the several uh, advanced neural network, uh, the, the, uh, the acoustic model. And the, uh, the recurrent neural network is usually uh, the covered in this advanced neural network acoustic model, but maybe this can be in the uh, next lecture. Uh, my today's kind of a goal is anyway to try to finish the explanation about the CNN uh, and so on. Okay, so uh, today's agenda is four acoustic models. So basically, this is uh, the mostly acoustic modeling and partly cover the feature extraction, but it's not about end-to-end. -end. But the basic neural network part is, of course, applied to the end-to-end -end neural network. So this part is actually quite related to the, uh, the entire lecture. First, uh, the, let's review the, the, our acoustic models. So we have our, uh, the, the speech feature uh, observation uh, sequence, and the, the output can be the token uh, sequence. It can be word or character uh, or subword, uh, depending on our application. And uh, for the classical, the acoustic model in speech recognition, we also always kind of are using the, uh, the phoneme sequences and so on. And then the, these uh, the three uh, the, the, uh, variable can be decomposed to have uh, three kind of factors. Uh, and so on. And then today's uh, the, the focus is this acoustic model part. And the, uh, the, the, our acoustic model is having an issue in the length. Uh, and then the, the, we try to kind of mitigate uh, this issue by uh, the introduced HM state sequence. Uh, that is, we spend a lot of time to uh, the, the study about uh, uh, this kind of issue and so on. And then actually uh, that in this uh, the lecture, please uh, the understand that the output part, how to kind of deal with the output part, is not so much changed. We're just using HMF. But input part, or how to kind of the model, the, the speech features, is actually replaced with a deep neural network. So this is just partly using deep neural network uh, power, but the, uh, the output labeling part, output sequential uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, problem is still based on the hidden Markov model. So that's the kind of uh, the high level uh, the, the discussion uh, the, in today's uh, the lecture. And let's uh, the revisit uh, our uh, the HMM, uh, the, the uh, the the discussion, actually, the, the in our HMM discussion, we uh, the, 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 the by using the HMM state sequence, we mostly uh, the focus on the uh, the POT givenness the uh, some HMM state in time frame t, and then corresponding to the observation, and then we actually make uh, uh, the likelihood function right, and then. Which function did we use here? We use Gaussian, Gaussian mixture model and so on. And this is actually a very strong uh, the constraint uh, due to the EM algorithm and so on. We actually cannot use the other, other functions uh, the so much. There's a few functions we can use it, but basically uh, the we cannot use the other function. This is a big uh, restriction. But as we discussed in the last time in the CTC uh, derivation, uh, we just remo uh, the, remove the constraint of the EM algorithm. We just focus on the gradient descent to optimize our parameters. We can actually uh, the, uh, remove this constraint uh, and this uh, the POT given this T part, uh, this part uh, can be actually replaced with a deep neural network. But again, the, all the other part is the same. And then this approach is called the DNN ATM hybrid system. So this uh, the word often appeared. So please remember uh, that, that I am using a DNN ATM hybrid or a hybrid. People just call it a hybrid system and so on. 
But this means that we still using the HMM. Uh, we still using the most of our formulation that we used before, like uh, uh, the beta B algorithm for the backward and so on. However, Gaussian mixture part is replaced with the neural network and so on. And then uh, the, there are a lot of ways to do that, but this is a one very typical way to uh, the, the use the kind of DNN uh, for uh, the, the uh, Ga instead of the Gaussian mixture model. Actually, deep neural network is very good at classification. Classification means that given the observation, we will actually predict which one is the kind of uh, the, the HMM state or phoneme and so on, phoneme character and so on. So we actually have a, uh, that can make a very good neural network uh, uh, classifier here. And then uh, the, what we usually are using in GMM is actually opposite, right? Observation is left. This one is observation is right. So then we actually can simply using the uh, product rule uh, the, 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 uh, or base uh, the theorem. And actually also, by the way, uh, the, uh, removing the, the, the another kind of uh, the prior information about observation. And then we can actually converting this uh, the, 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 the probability uh, with the, the uh, likelihood by dividing the prior. So this is a kind of only equation we need. And the PST is actually uh, computed by just kind of counting the, uh, the observation of the state and so on. And the, anyway, the idea is that we just focusing on this one in the deep neural network. And then if we try to convert it to the to with a kind of our GMM framework, we just kind of dividing by this the PST, uh, the prior distribution. Uh, that's it. And all our uh, the, 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 the another the 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 the, the, uh, the, the all our kind of uh, the, the formulations are actually almost same. And uh, luckily uh, the for the backward to get the kind of uh, the the, uh, the uh, occupation probability and so on, we can actually still using this one neural network uh, output divided by uh, the, the prior distribution. By the way, M step is not used anymore. So this part is replaced with the other uh, the graduate descent. But E step part, we can still use the other uh, the HMM algorithm. And another probably most important part is beta B algorithm. Given the model, uh, we try to get the kind of most likely sequence, right? This one is again we can actually use the HMM just by uh, dividing the uh, the the, the uh, again, the the DNN, uh, the the this, uh, the uh, the posterior, uh, the uh, divided by the uh, this uh, the prior distribution, uh, and so on. So by using this, uh, that we can actually uh, the also using the HMM. Okay, by the way, how how to uh, does, uh, the get to this kind of our, uh, the uh, DNN uh, the posterior will be discussed. Okay, so uh, the, now uh, the, we actually are uh, using all kinds of other uh, problem, POT given ST, other PST uh, the given OT. And then uh, the, let's think about uh, the, 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 uh, try to uh, focusing on uh, estimating this part. Uh, and it's actually uh, the, the becomes uh, the, the problem of the given speech feature to uh, predict the HMM state ST, okay? However, as you know, we don't have a correct label for HMM state. It is, uh, the alignment can be uh, the, the, uh, the any variations. So we actually using the big, uh, very big assumption, which is just using the beta alignment and then getting some kind of other uh, state uh, the index for uh, the each frame and then uh, using it as a target. So uh, this is a very big approximation again, because you know, as we discussed, we really not sure, we are really not sure uh, this alignment is correct or not. And then uh, beta alignment will provide us the kind of most likely 
alignment. Uh, but uh, this is not uh, true. And this is also obtained from the model. So this is actually one of the big approximation, but effectively this one is quite working well. So uh, DNN HMM is actually based on uh, this assumption and then uh, the, all the kind of uh, the following part is uh, the, the, uh, derived. So this part is the, uh, the probably the, uh, the most uh, the difficult part for everyone to uh, the understand. I actually first time didn't really understand it. So this means that we need beta variables. So we need some models, right? And how to make a model? We actually using Gaussian. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the this uh, the HMM uh, DNN hybrid system is actually highly depending on the previous uh, GMM system, and then get the beta alignment, and then make the kind of uh, the the, uh, the input and the output, uh, and then make a kind of classifier. Uh, and then people may also do the realignment based on beta alignment, uh, based on this kind of obtained DNA and so on. But it can be kind of a uh, the local optimum, right, in terms of the alignment. So that's why the, the, some people mentioned that the CTC or uh, the, the attention can be better because this assumption is too strong. Okay, so anyway, uh, the, now we know that the, the input and the output. Input speech features, it can be logomeric filter bank that which you guys implemented, right? And the output is the, the HMM state. Again, you guys also using it for your kind of assignment, uh, the coding assignment. It's uh, the, your case is simple, uh, the yes, no, uh, but the uh, it can be, you know, many of the characters or many of the sub word. Uh, the, depending on the, our system and so on. Uh, but anyway, the input is this kind of uh, the speech features and the output is uh, the label. And then every time frame, we use a kind of a, a deep neural network classifier to predict the HMM state, okay? Very simple, right? Very simple program. After we get the beta alignment, uh, the very simple program. Uh, so that the, the, since it is simple, and then just making a deep neural network to be kind of more complicated, uh, that, uh, that kind of methodology is quite working in the beginning of the, uh, the speech recognition development. Now I will uh, discuss more about, you know, what is the input feature uh, and what is a kind of a, uh, the intermediate uh, representation in deep neural network in more details. So first, uh, the input feature, uh, yes, uh, we use MSCC or logmail filter bank, but there is a big actually uh, the changes. So we usually concatenate several frames uh, so that uh, the input becomes more kind of rich information, more context information. This is actually not so much used for the GMM because GMM, we use diagonal covariance, right? Do you remember that? Diagonal covariance, right? Which is of diagonal element is completely zero. So this means that the features should not be so correlated. Uh, so uh, the logomer filter bank is, and is actually uh, the, the features, some correlation, but it's quite independent. But uh, uh, the, the, if we concatenate uh, the, the neighboring features, the feature is actually very highly correlated. The, with 10 milliseconds, the feature is not so much changed. So this is actually not well mo uh, the modeled in the Gaussian mixture. However, deep neural network doesn't care. We actually using the first linear layer to consider actually the, uh, the, this kind of correlation and so on. So we can actually input the uh, the concatenated features. So that is actually one uh, big change uh, from the uh, initial uh, the, the Gaussian mixture model to uh, the, the deep neural network. And the people can concatenate totally seven frames or 11 frames. So it's very long. Next part is the output. 
which I explained before. Anyway, we use the VDAB, uh, the algorithm, and then get. Okay, cool. So uh, the, now that uh, given this kind of uh, the HMM state as an output, uh, let's try to make a, a deep neural network classifier. And then uh, deep by, uh, neural network, uh, the, through the discussion with some of the students, people are not so much familiar with the deep neural, some people are not very familiar with the deep neural network. So I am kind of showing some kind of uh, the explanation uh, about the deep neural network, which is basically the combination of the lot of binary classifiers uh, if we're using the, uh, the sigmoid activation function. The deep neural network is, again, the combination of the binary classifier. So binary classifier with, is a simple uh, the problem to see whether uh, the our kind of data is uh, the yes or no, uh, the, the circle or uh, the, the cross. Uh, in this uh, the direction. By the way, this uh, the, uh, the mark uh, will depend. I heard that this uh, changes depend on the culture. In Japanese, a circle means correct, and uh, the X means the, uh, the wrong. <laughs> but uh, probably other people <laughs> may, be, may have a different <laughs> uh, uh, way, right? Yeah. But uh, please understand that circle is correct, <laughs> and uh, the, the, the cross is wrong. <laughs> and the um so I in this case uh, the cases I use a very kind of a simple simple uh, linear classifier, which is just kind of uh, the, the using the uh, the, uh, the sample uh, to be classified by using the linear function. And then to make this kind of to be more kind of probabilistic distribution, we actually using the sigmoid function uh, the, with a kind of linear uh, the function. To make the kind of uh, the the, uh, the, the uh, correct and wrong uh, the decision to be a probability, so this is a very simple uh, binary classifier. So people can understand it. I think so, right? Okay. Um, this uh, binary classifier we can also make it uh, by using the uh, the Gaussian mixture model. And the, uh, by using the Gaussian mixture model to actually get the likelihood of the correct and the wrong, and then we use a kind of a normalization, and then making it the probability, and then we can make actually uh, the uh, this one to be the other uh, probability of uh, the yes and the no. However, it is getting more difficult if the the, uh, the GMM. For example, it is not easy to actually represent this kind of shape as a, as a, the, the Gaussian mixture model. Maybe we could use this kind of way to make it, but it is not very easy for Gaussian mixture model to make a very uh, complicated pattern. Instead, uh, how neural network is presenting this kind of pattern, it's actually combined several classifier, several binary classifier. If we combine this kind of a shape, uh, the, the binary classification, this binary classification, and this binary classification, we can actually uh, the present uh, this kind of very complicated classifiers. And this is just kind of combine the uh, many of the binary classifier. And if we have uh, more layers, we can actually represent uh, many, many complicated uh, the, the classifiers and so on. And this is a kind of uh, the power of the neural network. Instead of just using the uh, one person decision, we're using the you know many people's uh, decision, uh, not the people, <laughs> but anyway, uh, the, the, by using the uh, the, uh, the several other uh, decisions and then combine them to actually other uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, present the complicated patterns. And then uh, this is just to kind of make a kind of a many kind of uh, combining other uh, the, the, uh, various patterns. But the deep neural network is actually also making the, this uh, the, the pattern to be more complicated by using the more layers. So this kind of actually combination is just having uh, the many kind of neurons here. So just kind of having more uh, the, the people here. But uh, the having multiple layers means that we have a more kind of meetings, more meetings, more meetings to define our ideas and so on. 
So this is actually uh, the, the deep neural network. So basically, it comes from the uh, the combination of the binary uh, classifier, but it's by combining the uh, the more people or more meetings, uh, which corresponding to the more layers and the more neurons. Uh, this becomes actually quite uh, the, the stronger. And then we can actually finally uh, the make a, uh, the, uh, the very complicated decision. In our cases, uh, the, the speech recognition, like every frame, whether this one is uh, the H or A or the HM state one and so on. Uh, that is a kind of deep neural network. And then let's go uh, the, use a little bit of math about it. For example, uh, by using the complicated, uh, the, the nonlinear, uh, the, uh, by using a, a complicated combination of the complicated uh, the uh, activation is represented as a uh, vector representation uh, vector uh, form so we have an uh, input of the uh, the, the uh, neural net uh, the, the speech features and then ha having a linear layer but uh, this is actually the uh, the linear uh, matrix and the vector so this means that instead of having a one uh, classifier, we actually having a, a lot of classifiers combined. So this actually, this equation corresponding to uh, the correct many people's opinion. And then uh, given this one, other, other, in, other input, uh, we will recursively perform this other decision uh, several times. And then uh, this kind of uh, the index L means the other layer. So this part uh, is becomes deep and then people started to call it the deep neural network. And then finally, this uh, the activation is actually slow to the softmax, uh, the activation function, which actually converting the uh, probability, uh, the, which converting this kind of features to the actual probability uh, of the, uh, the, in the, uh, the space uh, of uh, this state. Uh, the or labels and so on. Before that, we only using the sigma, so it's actually co a correction of the binary. But after the softmax, it becomes, for example, the uh, the one of the probability uh, in our vocabulary size and so on. So this is a kind of basic feed forward uh, neural network. And let's move to the uh, each uh, the part of the equations. Uh, we actually have a three part of the equation. One is a, a linear uh, the transformation. The other is the sigmoid function. And the other is the softmax function. And the first part is a linear uh, operation, uh, which is uh, probably everyone is familiar with that, just using the other uh, matrix to convert the speech features. And we often also using the bias vectors uh, and so on. And then this actually are uh, the combating it and, and also the, the linear uh, the operation is used to kind of a, a change the dimension size uh, the, from input to the, uh, the what we want. So this is a kind of linear the operation and the linear operation, as you may know, which this, since this is linear, the derivative is very simple. Uh, we just you know uh, the take the, this one for the W in terms of the W and then we just having a, a derivative here. And if we take the derivative for the bias, we can also have this kind of form. Okay, so uh, this is a kind of a, a, a linear operation. And note that this part is since matrix. So this is actually uh, the, 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 the quadratic in terms of the number of parameters. If we try to have a more kind of neurons, this uh, matrix size uh, becomes uh, increased proportional to the square uh, of the original dimension uh, and so on. And then the actually uh, the uh, the it's uh, I saw that I make it at a short quiz, but it's actually not. Um, the the go wider versus go deeper, which are the increase the parameters uh, the more. So the uh, the number of the dimension go wider means the number of dimension becomes in, uh, increased, right? And uh, go deeper means the number of layer becomes deeper, right? And uh, uh, actually, uh, the go wider, and then 
due to this kind of uh, the property, uh, the matrix property, generally uh, the number of parameters uh, becomes uh, the very uh, large. So please be careful about control your kind of models. Just making this part could be very large. And then it's the, the, the quite large. <laughs> the, the, I think it cannot well fit the, uh, the, your memory and so on. Instead of making it deeper, it's uh, easy to control. So people usually actually uh, the, the control the number of layers for the architecture, uh, rather than why, uh, the, the, uh, the number of neurons and so on. OK, and then the next function is a sigmoid function. Uh, this uh, the sigmoid function is a uh, very interesting property, which is actually uh, the making the any numbers, uh, the mapping the any number to 0 to 1. So this is actually very good to kind of uh, the model the probability of the binary. So if you know this is goes to uh, the, the some point uh, the point uh, like 0 0.7, which means the 70%, it would happen, right? And it would not happen, it would be a 30 percent less. So the one minus uh, the sigmoid uh, is actually the, the 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 probability of the uh, the, the negative uh, the, the, the event in the sigmoid function uh, and so on. And the uh, sigmoid uh, uh, by the way, uh, the, uh, we should be careful about the notation. Uh, from now on, we often actually have this kind of a notation. 1 plus e minus x vector. Usually, exponential cannot accept the vector, right? In the very mathematical, uh, the beginning of the mathematics, the, 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 we learned it, right? Log also cannot accept the, the vector in general, right? But from now on, uh, let's kind of uh, accept that, you know, exponential and the vector means that the exponential is performed for each element uh, of the vector. So this one is also one plus e minus x, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, is, uh, the, the one divided by one plus e minus x. This means that uh, actually vector of this operation for each component. So many people actually confuse this and the same for the log and so on. So please uh, the, the, do not confuse about it, uh, the, about this. Oh, the exponential with the, 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 the uh, vector, is, it is wrong. It's actually, yes, in some sense wrong, but uh, this is actually expansion of the, uh, the explanation about it. And then uh, the derivative becomes the, this other uh, interesting form, sigma x other, uh, uh, parenthesis one minus uh, sigma x uh, and so on. And the, if I have time, I usually actually demonstrate uh, uh, the, how the, the the sigmoid looks like. I uh, don't have so much time. Uh, but anyway, the usually, you know, sigma x zero, x equal zero, and then what is the sigma zero? Correct, 0 0.5, right? 0.5. So what is the uh, sigma x when the x is the, the minus infinity? Zero, yes. So it's gonna be like this. And what is the, uh, the x uh, that the equals the plus infinity? Correct. One. So sigma usually have a, this kind of shapes. Uh, the, if we also have a gradient and so on, we can also have a more discussion about this uh, the shape and so on. But I just uh, the, the, uh, skip the, uh, the more detailed discussion and so on. OK, uh, the, now that we will move to the softmax function. And this is actually not easy to write, <laughs> but uh, since it, it had a, a more uh, the dimension and so on. But actually, uh, this one is uh, the, a kind of our extension of the sigmoid function uh, from the a binary to multiple uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, labels uh, and so on. So for example, let's say uh, the J is the entire 
uh, the vocabulary size. And then uh, the sigmoid, uh, so, sorry, softmax function, first mapping any of this kind of value, any of the kind of value in H to the, uh, the, the uh, between zero and one. So this is very similar to the sigmoid function. And in addition, sigmoid function, a softmax function, actually satisfies the sum to one condition. This is very similar to sigmoid, but it's actually can also the, the apply to the, uh, the j equal uh, the more than two. So this uh, the property is very similar to the uh, the probability. So that people using a softmax function as a uh, the way to converting our uh, the, uh, the values to the probability. By the way, it can be anything. It can be you know, any other function than sigmoid and softmax, but the, if it satisfies this condition, we can actually use it. But sigmoid is very, and softmax is very good property when we get the derivative and so on. So that people usually using the other softmax function uh, as a kind of final uh, part uh, of getting the probability uh, and so on. So that's the, the major uh, the, the, the functions that, uh, that we use for the feed for the neural network. But actually, uh, the, uh, this is not everything. As some of you may know, actually we can use many of the functions operation in the deep neural network. We can actually using the law exponential uh, the multiplication uh, the sine, cosine, uh, the hyperbolic sine, the almost all the function uh, we can actually use to uh, the approximate our problems. So this is actually uh, one reason that the um, neural network is very, very powerful. But the one constraint is whether we can take a derivative uh, and so on. And this is actually uh, the, the most of the function we can take a derivative, but the actually the most basic operation, argmax, which we can get the speech equation result finally, right? This actually doesn't get the derivative. So this part is actually uh, the, uh, the cannot uh, uh, the used inside the neural network and so on. But almost all uh, the, the, the operation, we actually get the derivative and then we can use Okay, so final part is the objective function design. And then object, objective function, we usually using a cross entropy. Uh, this is actually uh, the uh, definition is like this. Uh, one for the reference and the one for the prediction. And then using the cross entropy, this uh, the means that it's actually uh, the, the just uh, the substituting the cross entropy uh, definition, and then it becomes this kind of equation form. However, this reference part is actually a little bit unique form, right? This difference part now is actually just using the beta via, uh, the, the beta via alignment and then making it at the kind of probability, right? This means that, that this part is actually just a Kronecker delta function where the uh, label is uh, the, the, the obtained by the, uh, the, the beta via alignment or not, right? So this actually summation part is uh, the, then uh, the simplified by using this other uh, the, uh, the Kronecker uh, delta. And then this is a final form uh, of the uh, cross entropy function, which is actually the, uh, the probability uh, of the, uh, the, the uh, beta uh, aligned uh, the stage sequence uh, the, and the summation over the T. So it becomes uh, actually the, uh, the, uh, the objective function uh, of the cross entropy in the other uh, hard alignment cases. Of course, the, the, if you're using the soft alignment, uh, this part uh, summation is not uh, the canceled out. Uh, and we may actually using the summation, uh, the, the, uh, keeping the summation to uh, the, also the, the get the kind of cross entropy objective function and so on.
But in most cases, again, uh, we just using the hard label. And then the, this becomes just a, a data like grid, a log like grid. But uh, this is just one possibility. Uh, we could use many other uh, objective functions, uh, like the, the square error uh, or uh, the, the other uh, the, 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 the form uh, of the, uh, the output uh, representations and so on. But the, the, we usually using the cross entropy uh, for uh, the, the speech recognition cases. So that's the uh, the entire uh, neural network uh, the design. So we set the kind of uh, discuss the input and what is output, and then uh, the, the some of the neural network functions inside, and then uh, the loss function, and then we can actually get the derivative to update the parameters and so on. And that's uh, the the, uh, the the middle part is actually quite has a lot of flexibility. Uh, compared with the Gaussian mixture models. Gaussian mixture model, the flexibility would be like a number of mixtures. Are there any other flexibility? Can we use a diagonal covariance or full covariance? Maybe something like that. There are a few extensions we can make, by the way, but that's a kind of a only uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the variations. But a uh, uh, neural network is basically can uh, the, the using the uh, any of the other uh, the, the functions and then get the kind of derivative, uh, the, the, and then uh, the, the make a kind of a, uh, the entire uh, architecture. So this flexibility is actually quite strong. So in my lecture, by the way, I try to. Uh, use the rectangular block when we have a trainable uh, parameters. And the uh, rounded re uh, rectangular block, when uh, the, the, uh, it's, it's uh, without the trainable parameters, like a sigmoid, a softmax, a sine, cosine, uh, log, and so on. This is actually a rounded uh, rectangular block. I try to kind of make it consistent, but if not, I apologize for it. Please point out it. And then observation or some kind of a, the intermediate activation is kind of a written as a circle. But anyway, the neural network is, again, can be at any of the kind of combination. So wait a moment. So we could actually, you know, uh, the, even change the uh, change the order. Uh, this is not very make sense, but actually this is one possible uh, the architecture. And the, uh, but this is very the, the unreasonable uh, the, uh, the architecture because a linear twice is actually can be written as a one linear function. This is very redundant. And it makes a kind of optimization difficult. And also twice uh, activation function, nonlinear activation function twice, also making the kind of uh, uh, the, the optimization very difficult. So I don't recommend to do that. Uh, but uh, yeah, we can have uh, many ways to actually uh, the, the design the, uh, the, uh, the, the architecture by, for example, using the after the sigma, the, we use a one linear transformation and a different linear transformation and then concatenate this kind of uh, the features and then throw it the sigmoid function, the softmax activation and so on. We can actually design uh, many of the kind of neural network architecture. So that's, uh, the, I call it the neural network engineering. <laughs> so the, from now on, actually a lot of neural network engineering happens. Uh, that is, uh, is a kind of uh, the very different from the uh, lectures uh, the, in the first part and the second part. Okay, the last part is given the, uh, the, the, this architecture and we set the loss function, we actually, all the information are given and the, the problem is how to actually estimate the parameters and so on. And then uh, we using the gradient descent uh, to uh, optimize the, uh, the, the uh, hyperparameter. And then uh, just a kind of uh, the recap, 
uh, this is the kind of a final loss function cross entropy, and then taking the derivative to get some kind of a derivative uh, in terms of the all kind of parameters, and then the updating the uh, the the, uh, the new uh, parameters from the old one. So this is uh, the, the the basic uh, the the uh, the gradient descent. And actually, uh, the, the, we also already introduced this in the CTC part where this uh, cross entropy uh, loss function is replaced with the, uh, the, the CTC uh, loss function and so on. And this uh, derivative is basically uh, almost all functions we can get uh, by using the chain rule. So please uh, the, the, the be familiar uh, with the chain rule. Uh, the, the one of the example of the chain rule would be, for example, the, the sigmoid function. This is actually very complicated uh, the, uh, function, but we can get the derivative uh, the, by using this kind of forms. And the, I, yeah, again, I was probably, uh, the, okay. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. And the, if we uh, take the derivative of uh, the sigmoid function, this one, in terms of the B, we first using the chain rule to factorize the derivative in terms of the sigmoid function itself and the, the argument of the sigmoid function uh, with the, uh, the, this uh, the derivative. And as we see already in the previous lecture, uh, previous other uh, pages, that the sigmoid function derivative is sigma y uh, no, one minus sigma y. And this part of the derivative is actually one. So that this is the answer. And uh, if we uh, the focus on the uh, A, and then we actually have uh, the X outside and then the rest is the same. And then by using the chain rule, uh, we can actually uh, get the, uh, the derivative and so on. Um, so the actually the, Again, chain rule is very important, so please uh, remember it. Uh, my friends, uh, the, he was in a company, and he often asked the questions to the other uh, intern application applicant that you know uh, the, for the intern. He will ask the uh, the uh, derivative of the sigmoid function and see whether you know you guys can fully really understand the chain rule and so on. So if you master this part, at least you know his interview you can pass. So <laughs> please remember that. Yeah, even I am also asking you guys often for the chain rule. Yeah. And the uh, the chain rule can now be the, the performed uh, recursively. Uh, that is actually the quite a uh, the strong part uh, of uh, the getting the uh, neural network. Just you know, uh, the composing the function. And then uh, the taking the derivative for each of the uh, the component by the chain rule, we can get actually uh, the derivative and so on. And then we can update the parameters. And the uh, the, the last part of the optimization, uh, no, not the last part, but the another remark of the optimization is uh, when we taking this derivative, can we take this derivative for each sample or can we take the, the this derivative for entire uh, the data or we can use something between? Actually, the EM algorithm is, as you remember, we take the kind of uh, the, uh, the, the update parameter by using the older data, right? Uh, which is actually very slow in terms of the convergence. But uh, the, since the, uh, the, the, uh, the EM algorithm is very kind of a good nature of the convergence, and also GMM is, uh, the computing is faster, so people usually using the patch processing. Uh, but the, uh, another approach is uh, taking the every sample and then getting the derivative and so on. This is actually very inefficient. Uh, since this uh, this part is uh, the incremental, so we actually cannot parallelize them. And then, however, this is basically very fast in terms of the convergence. And then mini-batch processing is doing something between. 
So the, let's say, for example, we have a, you know, 10,000 sample per data. We just uh, the, the divided data to each uh, the, the sample to be 1,000, uh, and then making the mini batch so that the each uh, the mini batch, we actually have a good uh, the parallelization property efficient. Uh, and uh, across the mini batch, we updating the parameters, and then that we can get the kind of faster convergence than the batch processing. So that the mini batch processing is very important uh, to uh, the make the kind of neural network to uh, the, the get the, our kind of reasonable performance. However, the size of, size of the mini batch is very, very important. And then I think the... <laughs> Oh, okay. okay, I skip. I, I forgot, that, but I skip it. This uh, so the original short quiz was actually this mini batch size that uh, affects the performance and so on. And the answer is yes. So, the, sorry, but I, I, I actually suddenly changed the another question. We have still seven minutes, right? Yeah, uh, but we still don't go to the CNN. Okay, um, so, um uh, mini batch processing is again the uh, quite important hyper uh, parameters. It's actually the, the, in addition to kind of a control the convergence and the, uh, the effectiveness of the uh, parallelization of the computation, mini batch size is also affecting the memory, GP memory, and so on, right? So mini batch is. And the mini batch size is also depending on the some of the uh, operation like uh, uh, the the the, uh, the batch norm and so on. This is advanced topic. But anyway, the, the batch uh, the norm or uh, the convergence speed, uh, the the effectiveness of the parallelization and the memory size. So this mini batch size is very difficult to tune. And actually, uh, this is the most important part uh, of the uh, the, uh, the getting the kind of reasonable performance. So uh, please remember that this one is a, one of the most important hyperparameter in deep neural network. And then again, I have one story. Nowadays, uh, there are many people moving to the deep neural network, right? And then. Some people may, you know, just you know, knowing the deep neural network, but don't know so much about actually uh, doing some optimization. There are such people exist, right? You know, just knowing, but has never, you know, tried the, the, the things actually and so on. We can easily detect such people. So we can just ask mini batch size. Mini batch size is again very important. If people are actually working on the program, we have to tune, we have to understand our problem. We have to understand all kind of our, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the computer configurations and so on. Then again, you know, the, the people don't have, the, they never touch deep learning, but just, you know, they're the knowing deep neural network and, you know, they explain something about it. And then, you know, again, if you guys want to see whether he or she is really knowing the deep neural network, just asking, asking the batch size. If they cannot answer, that person actually doesn't touch the deep neural network. Okay. So next, uh, the, the hyperparameter is the learning rate. In addition to this, uh, the, the uh, back propagation gradient part, uh, there is a one hyperparameter here, which is uh, the controlling the uh, the, the learning, uh, the behavior. By the way, this one is also uh, the similar to the mini batch because mini batch also kind of control the scaling and so on. But anyway, this kind of uh, the, the setting the uh, learning rate is uh, the very difficult. And the, uh, there are a lot of ways to some level optimizing the uh, learning rate, but the, uh, this uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, optimization uh, usually doesn't have uh, any uh, the, the answer for the scaling and so on. At least the scaling level, we have to tune uh, this uh, the, 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 uh, the learning uh, the data and so on. And uh, this is the most easiest way to uh, the tune the learning behaviors. 
So uh, that I want to mention, emphasize it, because from now on, you will, you know, are doing some kind of new architecture, implementing it, and it's not working well. Usually, we have to tune the other, the, the, this other parameter. Otherwise, uh, your architecture might be correct, but due to the kind of uh, the, 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 the missing of the learning rate, you guys may not have a full kind of a power of your new architecture and so on. So this is unfortunate, but anyway, try to tune the learning rate if it doesn't work well. And then uh, this is actually uh, the, the second quiz. So this is uh, the, the, uh, this side shows the training accuracy, higher is better. This one is validation accuracy, higher is better. And this one, again, uh, the training accuracy and the variation accuracy, higher is better. And then the uh, question is, which one needs better in terms of the training behavior? That's short quiz. Oh. The answer is yes, the, the, nowadays the same scale, and then of course the right, right side is better, right? But uh, I, I, wanted to, I wanted not to answer this because the, my intention is the gap of the training and the validation. <laughs> Uh, the, the right side, the training, the validation is very similar, right? Similar behavior. And the left side, training and the validation behavior is very different, right? Uh, this is actually happened in the, uh, the uh, typical overtraining. And then this actually quite often happens. Uh, the, how to uh, the, the mitigate this issue? We can just reduce the learning rate. This is very important uh, so that uh, the police uh, the remember uh, this trick and so on. Okay, so I couldn't move to the other uh, CNN, but the, anyway, I can finish the, uh, the basic neural network uh, part. Yeah, thank you so much.